I'm your host, Eddie Muller, and I welcome you to Noir Alley, which this week I am temporarily renaming Sleaze Alley. That's because we're about to watch a tawdry exercise in studio sexploitation called Overexposed, released by Columbia Pictures in 1956. Spare me the tweets and emails declaring that this is not a genuine film noir. I am completely aware of that. But once in a while, I like to mix things up around here, especially if it lets us take a detour down cinematic side streets a few sketchy blocks south of Noir Alley. One seemingly small but significant difference between films of the 40s and 50s was the change in public taste from brunettes to blondes. The more buxom, the better. The meteoric stardom of Marilyn Monroe in the early 50s started a trend, and theater screens were soon exploding with M's. Marilyn, Mansfield, Mamie, and more. As in Cleo Moore, the star of today's film. Bear in mind that the trend towards more blatant use of female sexuality was part of the studio's strategy to help movie theaters compete with television. Just like you couldn't get Technicolor and CinemaScope at home, Cleo Moore's voluptuous figure was more than a small screen could handle. She starred in nine movies during a lightning-fast five-year run in the 1950s and seemingly posed for more than a million cheesecake photos in the dozens of men's magazines that followed in Playboy's wake. I picked this particular Clio vehicle because it offers an intriguing twist on her own story. She plays a cynical young woman, used to being exploited, who wants a career behind the camera, not in front of it. Her character, Lila Crane, is an ambitious hard case straight out of a 40s film noir. Typically, this character would be played by a man, with a good woman trying to keep him on the straight and narrow. Overexposed flips that script with discomforting results. Smile, Max. As though you meant it. Cleo Moore was born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, from a family entrenched in the state's Democratic Party machine. In 1944, when she was only 15, Cleona, as she was born, married Palmer Long, son of late Louisiana Governor Huey Long. His controversial rise and fall was immortalized in the 1949 film all the King's Men. Well, the marriage was curt and combustible, and Cleo soon moved with her family to Southern California, where they hoped to find work in the post-war building boom. An RKO scout spotted her at the fights one night, and before you could say, take a deep breath and hold it, Cleo was showing off her figure in the studio's Congo Bill adventure serial. For the next four years, RKO deployed her in any movie that required a brief bit by a blonde bombshell. Her best showing came in a small but memorable role opposite Robert Ryan in the 1952 film On Dangerous Ground. She played a curvy dame who knew all the angles. That character became her stock and trade once she united with B-movie auteur Hugo Haas who hit on a formula that would make him a staple of 50s sleaze cinema. Once a distinguished theater actor and director in his native Czechoslovakia, Haas wrote, directed, and starred in 1952's Strange Fascination, the story of a middle-aged concert pianist whose life is ruined by a sexy two-timing temptress. Guess who? It was basically von Sternberg's The Blue Angel, and Haas repeated the recipe annually, with Cleo Moore, the voluptuous vixen, in every one. One girl's confession, thy neighbor's wife, bait, the other woman, hold back tomorrow, and hit and run. Moore starred in only nine movies, and Hugo Haas made seven of them. As a creative team, that ties them with Joseph von Sternberg and Marlena Dietrich for quantity, if not quality. Overexposed, however, is not a Hugo Haas film. Its script bears the fingerprints of a couple of crime yarn veterans, Richard Sale and James Gunn, with a wholly unexpected writing credit for playwright and poet Gil Orlovitz, a head-scratcher that I'll discuss afterwards. It's directed by veteran journeyman Louis Seiler, who also directed more in the 1955 potboiler Women's Prison. Co-starring is Richard Crenna, already a familiar face on TV at this point, 
with Isabel Elsom, Richard Greenleaf, and Jack Albertson in supporting roles. But let's face it, this entire enterprise was built around its short but statuesque star. And here she is, Cleo Moore, overexposed.